welcome Jane Hammond, who is like one of my heroes. And I, I think she is just an absolute, have an absolute grace for this topic. So welcome Jane Hammond. Hi, everybody. I, it is such an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for convening this time of, of sharing about this very, very vital, important topic. And I just want to say that I am as excited about hearing from the other guests on this program because each one of them brings such a unique and powerful perspective to this topic. And so I love the mixture of the gifts that are here today. Uh, so thank you so much for, for convening this. Um, I started operating or recognizing that I was operating in discernment well over 35 years ago. And, um, you know, I think probably those of us that have a gift of discernment or, or just that are sensitive to the Holy Spirit can probably all relate to perhaps walking into a room and suddenly you feel uncomfortable with a person or you feel uncomfortable with the situation and it kind of hits your spirit wrong and you just kind of go, hmm, wonder, wonder what that is. Um, and, you know, um, and so, so on this journey, I've kind of learned to give language to the things that I'm picking up on, the things that I'm sensing all the while challenging myself not to become critical or judgmental of people, how to walk in love and discernment uh, at the same time. Because I'll be honest, in my early years of operating in discernment, um, I just wanted to shoot them all and tell God they died. Okay. Oh <laughs> I, just, I had very little oh grace, God. very little mercy. Okay. Um, but honestly, what happened with me is that I got a prophetic word from Kim Clement way back when he first came to America. And he said, I've anointed you to see the snake and to see the wolf. Mm -hmm. And that God said, I've called you to be a watchman for this ministry and for the body of Christ. Now, I believe that Jesus has called every single one of us to come to a higher level of watching and praying. And in order to really do that, we're not just watching the news. We've got to learn how to watch in the spirit and know how to discern what's taking place in people, what's taking place in places, in territories that are around you, what's taking place in perhaps some processes, discerning God in the midst of people's processes, and as well having a, a, a discernment perspective about what's taking place. Of course, we see this in 2 Kings chapter 6 when Elisha uh, and his servant were surrounded by the Syrian army. And uh, Elisha had a whole different perspective than his servant. Um, his servant was like, oh my gosh, we're surrounded. We're going to be wiped out. And Elisha's, yeah, like, yeah, don't worry. There's more that are with us that are with them. And the servant looked out the window and couldn't see what Elisha was seeing. So Elisha prayed for him and said, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And when Elisha's servant's eyes were opened, he actually saw a completely different perspective about what was going on. Because while it was true in the natural that they were surrounded by the enemy, there was a greater truth that was supernatural in that there were angel armies surrounding the Syrian army. Okay, so that just changed the whole perspective. So in, in my book on discernment, I talk about discerning the times, discerning the spirit of God, discerning um, angels, discerning demons. And what do we do, like Elizabeth was saying, when we discern something that's operating in uh, a fellow member in the body of Christ or somebody that's perhaps a wolf or a snake, like, like uh, Kim Clement prophesied over me. So when, when I went back to our ministry, I was sharing uh, this, this prophetic word with, with Bishop Hammond. And he said, you know what, we need discernment. In the body of Christ today, now more than ever. So he laid his hands on me. He said, Lord, we activate that gift to come to another level, to come to a higher place of operation. And, and, and I charge her with that. I didn't feel any different. But the next day when I went to church, it was like, I'm such a people person. And I was like, hi, good to see you. Wonderful to see you. I go up and I'd hug him. And all of a sudden it was like the curtain was removed, you know, and I saw all this stuff. The word revelation actually in the Greek is the word apokalypsis, which means to remove the veil or to remove the curtain. And so you see in the spirit, you see angels, you see demons, you see things that are going on in, in heart motives or wrong intentions. You, you see what Paul said when he warned the Galatians and he said, beware of false brothers that want to come in and tr cause trouble in the church. And so all of a sudden, all this stuff, I started seeing all this stuff and I literally went back to Bishop Hammond about two weeks later, I said, you put your hands back on me and you take this back. I don't want this. I, I don't want this operating in my life. 
because it, it just felt so heavy and so negative. And he said, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. You're going to have to learn how to operate in this gift of the Holy Spirit. And so my husband and Bishop were, uh, who are two of the most mercy motivated men, really began to really impart into my life, really began to challenge me and charge me to operate in a higher level, to understand that gifts are given not to become judgmental or critical, but actually to give an opportunity for people to get set free, for people to come to a higher place in their walk with Christ, for you to be able to deal with principalities and powers. Uh, you know, the, uh, the listeners have to be aware that we are in a war right now. I mean, we literally are in a war. That I believe that uh, the, the war right now is over the voice. I believe the war is over uh, who is controlling the voice. Uh, I believe that there's God's voice, but then there's a lot of other voices that are out there in the world today. And we've got to become very discerning uh, about the voices that we're hearing, the voices that are being released into the atmosphere. And we've got to understand that we've got to release the voice of God. Uh, Psalms 29 verse 4 says the voice of the Lord is powerful. It literally means the voice of the Lord is a force. So we've got to be able to discern the voice of the Lord in the midst of all this other stuff so that we can grow, so that we can gain a strategic advantage in the spiritual warfare that's going on all around us. I believe that we're warring for the souls of men and women. I believe we're warring for our families. We're warring for a nation and for the nations that are in the earth today. And I believe that God can actually give us clear spiritual perspectives about the things that are withstanding us in the spirit, but also to see the clear spiritual perspective about angel armies that are being released to us in this season of time so that we can actually advance the kingdom. If we have eyes to see like Elisha did, then we have a capacity to position ourselves differently and to actually be able to move forward, even in times of, uh, of great spiritual warfare or great darkness. Um, I love Isaiah 60 that tells us, you know, darkness is going to cover the earth and deep darkness is going to cover the people, but the Lord is going to rise it, on his people in the midst of that time. And then kings and nations are going to be brought to that light. We've got to be able to keep a clear spiritual perspective so that we know how to grow. We know how to operate. We know how to pray. We know how to uh, begin to extend and expand God's kingdom, even in very, very challenging times. Um, I know that just for us personally in our area, our territory, a little over 20 years ago, we were battling up against a spirit of poverty uh, in our area. It was like businesses would open, businesses would close, um, people would build houses, they would go into foreclosure. It was just like this constant struggle. And then the Lord showed me the principalities and actually gave me the names of the territorial spirits that were controlling our area. And in Florida, we were actually ranked number 64 out of 67 in the counties on an economic scale. So we were listed as one of the poorest counties in all of Florida. And when God gave us not just the names of these spirits, but the strategy on how to actually dismantle their power over our area, um, I believe that that's the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God giving us the revelation, but then giving us the strategy that we need to marry together to see breakthrough. I want you to know that within 18 months, we went from being one of the poorest counties in Florida to being named the, one of the richest real estate markets in the entire continental United States. And our area has grown. It's thrived. Uh, the poverty spirit has been broken. And we've actually seen tangible change come. And so my challenge to every single one of the listeners is no matter what you do in life, you need a greater level of discernment. If you're a pastor, if you're a spiritual leader, you need discernment. If you're an intercessor, you need discernment. If you're a business person, you need discernment. If you're a school teacher, you need discernment. If you're a parent, you need discernment. I believe we've all got to come to another level in operating in discernment. And I'm going to close my time out by just reading a prayer that Solomon prayed out of 1 Kings chapter 3, right after he descended the throne um, from his father, his father, David, his first few uh, days in office, he had to have his older brother executed who had tried to steal the throne. He had to have Joab, who was David's general executed. He had to have Abiathar uh, um, uh, banished out of the kingdom. So he goes up and Solomon offers all these sacrifices up on Gibeon. And then the Lord comes to him and says, what is it that you want, Solomon? And listen to what Solomon prayed. He said, your servant is here among your people you've chosen, a great people too numerous to, to number. So give your servant 
a discerning heart to govern your people and to be able to distinguish between right and wrong for who is able to govern this great people of yours. And the Lord was pleased that Solomon asked for this. And God said to him, since you've asked for this and not long life for yourself or asked for the death of your enemies, but you've asked for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you've asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you've not asked for, both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you'll have no equal among kings. And if you walk in my ways and obey my statutes as, and commandments as your father David did, I'll give you a long life. And Solomon awoke and realized it had been a dream. So, so God gave Solomon an impartation of wisdom and discernment that enabled him to govern rightly as long as he was walking in God's ways. And so I want to challenge each and every one of you to rise up press in, understand that God wants to cause our eyes to see, our ears, our ears to hear, and our hearts to be able to receive fresh revelation from heaven through discernment that'll give us an ability to advance his kingdom in this very important day.